Pokemon Purple Banditos, and welcome back to some more Let's Play Pokemon Fire Red. I'm Purple Rodri. Last time we obtained the Pokedex, met our rival Sully, and also obtained our starter Pokemon, the Bulbasaur, which we nicknamed Bolin. In today's episode, we are going to make our way back to Viridian City, and maybe add a new team member along the way. Maybe this could be it, you never know. There we have it, guys. That is the team member we are not going to be adding. No, don't get your hopes up, alright? I am not going to be adding a rat -ta 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 to our team. I'm kind of just going to go with it and see, hopefully, the Pokemon that I've been looking for. It should be somewhere in this grass. It's actually going to be a great addition to our team. A lot of you guys suggested this Pokemon, and it's a Pokemon that I can definitely agree with. So with that, guys, we actually do have the Pokemon I'm going to be adding to our team. It is Pidgey. Pidgey's going to be our flying type to get us through this game. We're taking that whole Ash Ketchum route, you know, and we're going to be catching this little Pidgey. Good thing, you know, well, well, not a good thing. I was going to say, good thing we didn't beat our rival because we got to level 6. But you know what? It's okay. We'll probably do a lot of leveling up from here on out. I feel like we actually have a lot of leveling up to do uh, before we make it, you know, a little bit further from here. Okay, so let's go ahead and use the Pokeball then. And with that, we should finally catch the first, well, second member of our team. So there we have it, guys. Gotcha. Pidgey was caught. With that, we've gone ahead and caught Pidgey. And I do have a nickname ready for this Pidgey. I think it's going to be an awesome Pokemon. It's the forest Pokemon. Its height is one foot. It's like one feet. It's like little Elsa. Its weight is four pounds. Does not like to fight. It hides in tall grass and so on. Foraging for food such as small bugs. So the nickname I'm actually going to give this Pidgey. It looks like a, a very happy Pidgey. So let me go ahead and nickname it. You know, it's a Spanish nickname. That's what I like to do. I like to do that in my spare time. So I'm going to call it Brincar which means to jump for joy. With that, Brincar has been added to our team, and we are ready to make our way to Viridian City. Yo, maybe Nurse Joy will like the fact that I caught me a Pokemon. You know, I'm sitting at two Pokemon. You guys think, you guys think she'll dig it? You guys think chicks dig the fact that I have two Pokemon? I mean, don't call me a Pokemon master, but I got a whole two Pokemon out of 151 in this Pokedex. You know, I don't want to seem uh, cocky or anything, but, uh, you know, two, two Pokemon. That says a lot. I bet half of these trainers don't have two You don't even care. You don't even care, Nurse Joy. All right. Well, you know what? I'm going to take my Pidgey, and I'm going to go look for the nurse next Nurse Joy. You heard me. You heard what I had to say. Before we actually continue on in our journey, I need to get ourselves some potions. I'm pretty sure they sell some at this mart, because I know we have a tough journey ahead of us. And by tough, I mean pretty tough. Yeah, it's going to be a little tough. So I'm going to go ahead... And no, 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 I want like three potions. I, I think three potions will actually do the trick here. But yeah, it should be enough to get us through and get us through the first gym, which who knows, maybe we'll even get there today. Okay, we bought the potions. Now, I know a lot of you guys have played through this game, and it's just a game that I think everyone has kind of has to play through at one point or another. It's a special experience. It's a good time. I enjoy it. Why the heck don't we have running boots? Does anyone have any idea why the heck we don't have running boots? Wasn't our mother supposed to give us running boots? Does our mother give us running boots? What if I left our house without running boots? Oh my gosh, what if I'm never going to get running boots? Well, you, you think this game would give them to me? What if I didn't go and say goodbye to my mom and we were supposed to get running boots from her? I'm honestly going to feel completely terrible if our mom had running boots and I didn't go back and say goodbye to her. When is the next time I'm going to see her? Honestly, when is the next time I'm going to be all the way back in Pallet Town? You know what? I'm having these feelings. I think I'm. I think I'm about to head back to Pallet Town. I'm having like a, an old man's like longing for home. I kind of just want to fly back. What is this adventure? Are we really even gonna make it through? Oh yeah. By the way, we're doing a tutorial of catching Pokemon. Kind of funny how I already caught a Pokemon, and this old man is just like now telling us like, oh, you know, here you go. Uh, catch a Pokemon, dude. I think I know what I'm doing, old man. Look. Uh, I don't want to brag or anything, but uh, I got a whole two Pokemon. You know what I'm saying? Uh, the Nurse Joy over there, she seemed very excited at the fact that I have two Pokemon. And I, I really hope that you will be excited about it too, old man. Okay, so we made it here to the next route. And it's actually here where we're going to be making it through a kind of a long area, I would say. It's kind of a long place. Let's walk inside then. It's kind of a nice little area. You know, it's that, that beginning route that everyone has to go through. And we have made it to the Viridian Forest. Ooh, flashback anybody? Nostalgia? I don't want trainer tips though. You know, when I was a kid, the first time I made it through this forest, 
in Pokemon Yellow, which was the first Pokemon game that I played, I honestly didn't have much of an idea what I was doing. I would kind of just go into things and be like, well, let's hope that I can make it through this game. And I remember walking into Viridian Forest. Now, you have to remember the fact that Fire Red is a remake of Yellow, Blue, and, uh, you know, Red. But the big difference is, like, this is all nice and shiny and colorful. But when you played through, like, Red or Blue or Yellow, it was, like, black and white. So, you know, when I played, when I first played through that, and it was like black and white, I think I was playing it on like a Game Boy Color. It was the uh, purple Game Boy Color, the see-through one. The N64 had the same controller with it at one point. It was like the see-through purple controller or whatever. That's the Game Boy that I had. And I remember playing through it, and it was dark. It was probably like 6 p.m. the first time I played Pokemon. It was like afternoon. It was after school got out or whatever. Because, I'll actually explain this to you guys. It was actually, you know, I always wanted a Game Boy. But my parents didn't really have the resources to get me one or anything. And I had a friend who uh, didn't play his anymore. And he told me, he's like, oh, yeah, well, I'll, I'll sell you my uh, Game Boy Color. I was like, yeah, how much? He was like, 10 bucks. So for like 10 bucks, he gave me like uh, the purple Game Boy Color. He gave me Pokemon uh, Yellow, Centipede, and like a Bug's Life. Um, and some, yeah, I think those were like the three games that I had. So, you know, I got it. I went home. And uh, the first game I popped in was like Pokemon Yellow. I remember like flipping on the Switch. And like you just, you know, immediately I just remember I was like, oh, what is this? You hear Pikachu's like terrible high pitched scream in Pokemon Yellow. And I was like, oh my goodness, what is this game? Like I love Pokemon. I think at that point, like I was big into the show already. I was watching the cartoons and stuff. Uh, I was, it was probably like third or fourth grade or something where I got my Game Boy Color. I, I don't really remember it was either one of those grades. And I just remember I started playing the adventure and going through it. I think I did start out with, uh, well, no, it was Pikachu. Who am I kidding? But I made it to Viridian Forest, and I remember, like, it was getting dark at night, so it was a little bit darker, and if you guys have ever played a Game Boy Color, uh, it's kind of tough to see. Definitely very tough to see a Game Boy. Uh, it's really, really dark. You can't see a whole lot, especially at night. You have to have a bright light on it, and then even if you have a, a bright light on it, you couldn't see a whole lot, so it kind of sucked. Yeah, you know, it was kind of tough to play the Game Boy at night. For those of you guys now with a 3DS, feel blessed. Because back in the day, it was so freaking difficult to see anything on the Game Boy Color. So then, you know, I started playing it that night. And I remember I got to Viridian Forest. And it got really dark really quick. So almost immediately, I had no idea what the heck I was doing. I was like, alright, well, it's kind of really dark in here. Maybe I should just save and wait till the morning and I, I that was my first experience with Viridian Forest You know the thing is like I feel like we should probably battle some of these guys Just to get some experience going on Bulbasaur because I know that the gym coming up. It's going to be a little bit tougher Well, not really not if we get to the right level, which I think is like 10 I think 10 is when Bulbasaur finally learns a grass type move And I'm sure you guys know the first you know gym that's coming up so Let's hope we can get, you know, Bulbasaur there. I think it'll be okay. Like I was saying, it's really nice, like, the fact that the screens are so bright and everything now. You should feel completely blessed. For any one of you guys that are probably a little bit older, you know, the generation that was raised with the Game Boy and the Game Boy Color and the Game Boy Pocket and all those sorts of things, you probably know where I'm coming from. But for those of you guys that are a little bit younger and that probably started, I'm guessing, with the SP, the Game Boy Advance SP where it started with a backlight, you have no idea how nice you have it. You don't know the struggle. The struggle of playing with a, a little wiggle light. Uh, you know, the I don't know if you guys know what it was, but there was this little light that you used to plug into the side of the Game Boy Color. It was called like a worm light, and it was like this purple little light, and you would plug it in to the side uh, where like the uh, transfer, transfer cord went or whatever it was, the trade cord. You would plug in the little light, and it would like have a little like, twirly little coil going up and the light at the top and that's how you would see it was kind of weird and it kind of sucked honestly it kind of sucked playing with that so like to go from that little thing to like everything being so beautiful and bright you should appreciate life because you guys are lucky you didn't have to go through the struggle of hiding under blankets with a flashlight and playing your Game Boy Color until your parents told you to go to bed I think uh, a lot of you guys know what I'm talking about I know I did that I would stay up late and like turn on the light or like a little flashlight because my parents wouldn't want me to be up that late or have the light on so then I just like have like a little flashlight and be like yeah I'm playing Pokemon this is the bomb so yeah you know it was fun it's little good times but it's little memories like that that I have of this oh crap I thought he almost paralyzed us I was like what a, a paralysis I thought he was using Thunder Wave I'm like just completely like 
ready for the late game. You know, like the the later part of the game where we're like higher up and we're actually like kind of competitively battling. I'm just so used to that, you know, game mode that the beginning early stages of the game, I'm just like, what the heck is going on? I don't know. You tell me. All right, so we're almost done with this Caterpie. And with that, actually, we're almost out of Viridian Forest. It's, uh, it's a little tough, you know, going through this place, I guess you could say. Eh, it's not that tough. It's a little bit annoying, that's for sure, but it's not that tough. All right, we defeated Bugcatcher Anthony. Also, I am going to be uh, training Brinkar very soon, but it's going to be a, probably a little bit from now. Right now, I'm kind of just focusing on training Bolin because I think Bolin's actually going to be um, our big hitter once we really get going, you know, once we get things started and begin making our way through this game, at least for the beginning of it because I know that uh, Bolin will be actually very, very helpful in the beginning of it. Okay, make our way through here. We don't have any repels. Oh, that feeling. I think I'm not alone in this. That feeling when you walk through a patch of grass and no Pokemon appear. You know what I'm saying? High fives all around. All right, I think we all know. It's kind of like... It's kind of like when your Pokemon breaks out of a paralysis or when it wakes up from sleeping after one turn. It's just that really nice, good feeling. I think we've all had it at one point or another where we're just like, yes. You just like shake your head. You know, you do the little nod. You're like, yeah. You know, the little half smile, little half smile nod. You're like, yes, my Pokemon just did that. Yes, I like that. I like my Pokemon breaking out of the paralysis heal on the first turn. Yes, I like my Pokemon waking up after a turn. Yes, I like walking through that patch of grass without any Pokemon, you know, popping out at me. I feel like a real boss, you know what I'm saying? I'm feeling like Giovanni and Team Rocket up in here, you know what I'm saying? I think you guys know what I'm saying. Anyways, this is our last battle before we finally make it out of the freaking Viridian Forest. I know, believe me, Viridian Forest annoys me too. Uh, very, very annoying. Thank goodness, like, they haven't kept up with the forests in the other generations. Jokes. Clearly they have. Clearly, forests are always a very annoying part of the game. Clearly, there's always a forest kind of early in the games. It always comes at you. You always have to go through it, even if you don't want to. I kind of hate going through the forest parts sometimes, especially when I have Pokemon poisoning me, kind of like this little Weedle thing. You know, I've always been kind of like, eh, sketched out by Weedles just because, like, I watched the anime and I remember the bee drills like, attacking Ash. Ever since then, I almost feel like I'm biased towards Caterpies. I think it's just because Ash had a Butterfree, that's why I liked him more. What if Ash would have had a Weedle? You know, in a parallel universe out there, Ash probably caught a Weedle instead of a Caterpie, and it was probably the Caterpies that chased him down and tried to put him to sleep. What if? You know, what if just one little thing like that had been flipped? What if he was actually letting go of his Beedrill? Spoiler alert, if you haven't watched the first season of Pokemon, which I'm sure you probably have, great season, check it out, really awesome. It's actually really, really good. I'm pretty sure it's on Netflix if you're trying to check it out. It's awesome. I love the first season of Pokemon. Probably one of my favorite ones just because that's the one I saw as a kid. And I actually have the little books too. Do you guys remember the little books? Like, I don't know if you had them, but they used to sell them. We used to have, like, in elementary school, like, little book fairs. Little strange little book fairs. And I remember that they had, like, the whole little Pokemon books. I think the first one, it was, like, a red cover. And it was number one of Pokemon. And it was, like, number one Pokemon. I think Ash was on the cover. And it was called, like, I Choose You. Or something like that. And uh, I remember collecting those books because I thought how freaking cool they were. All right, guys. We made it to Pewter City. I'm gonna go ahead and heal up our Pokemon and hey pretty lady how's it going uh, you know I was uh, just walking around I uh, met your uh, cousin down in Viridian City she told me to hit you up when I was here you could show me around the town you know maybe give me a little tour you know show me what it's all about you know maybe uh, you know just uh, give me a little tips around the town you know, see what's going on and uh, just get things going a little bit you know what I'm saying no okay that's one of these days you know one of these days what there's five other regions one of these days Crickets are chirping in the background. There's there's definitely, you know, something going on there. All right, guys, with that, we have made it to the first gym, and it is Pewter City's Pokemon Gym. It's Leader Brock, the rock-solid Pokemon trainer. What do you guys say uh, we make our way inside, then, and see what awaits us? I think our Bulbasaur is ready. Hiya, do you want to dream big? Do you dare to dream of becoming the Pokemon champ? I'm no trainer, but I can advise you on how to win. Let me take you to the top. What? Sure, take me to the top. All right, let's get happening. First Pokemon. Oh, man, is this guy just telling me how to Pokemon battle? I don't know what makes these people think that I'm not good at Pokemon battling. You know, I, I have two Pokemon. I mean, if that doesn't make me a Pokemon master right there, 
You know, take me to the champion right now. I have one Pokemon that's level like nine. I got a little Pidgey that's level three. If that doesn't make me a Pokemon master, I don't know what will. If you guys think you know what makes you a Pokemon master, you let me know. You know what I'm saying? Maybe, uh, maybe you guys will know what makes you a Pokemon master around here. Okay, so here's the fun fact though that kind of sucks a little bit. It's that Geodude is really, really defensive. So it's going to be kind of difficult to take him down with Bolin right now because we're not level 10. It's at level 10 that we actually learn the move that's going to help us out quite a bit. So all I'm going to do for now is Leech Seed it and then just knock out a bunch of tackles, honestly. I think that'll work. Nope, that that's that's fun. That is a, that is a blast. So how are you guys doing today? Uh, right after this battle, we'll actually be able to do a little something. You know, uh, I think this is going to take a little while. Hope you guys have been enjoying your day. I hope you're enjoying your your stay here in uh, Let's Play Pokemon Fire Red. I'm just going to growl at this Geodude. I'm going to try to lower this dude as much as I can. And let's cross our fingers. You know, Simber, cross our T's, dot our I's. And uh, he's going down actually not that, not that slowly. I guess this is a good strategy if you're lower level. I remember actually uh, when I first played Yellow, I had no idea what the heck I was doing in this gym. Uh, one of the first things I did was like I ran into this gym. You guys have to remember the fact that like I had never played Pokemon before I barely knew what like type advantage. I still barely know what type advantages and disadvantages are So imagine me then like a little eight-year-old boy and I'm like what the heck am I doing with this? Why is my Pikachu not able to take down this thing? I remember coming into this gym and I was like, yeah, all right my Pikachu level 11 I was like how you like that Brock level 11 Pikachu. I know tackle Thunder Wave and a couple other moves. Like, you're not going to be taking me down today, my man. I'm looking real strong. I think I'm going to be uh, the Pokemon Master after I defeat this gym over here. You know, am I in here to work out or am I in, am I in here to kick some butt? So, you know, I walked in there. I walked in. I looked Brock in the eyes and I said, You, you're going down. You know, I said, I looked him, I looked Brock in the non existent eyes and I said, You over there. I see you eyeing me down with your eyes that don't exist. I got a level 11 Pikachu, and he's ready to take you down. He's ready to make some magic happen. You know, he's ready to put the wonder in wonderful. He's ready to put the magic in magician. You know what I'm saying? So then I battled the first dude, got KO'd, didn't know what the heck I was doing. I had to go catch another Pokemon, came back, finally beat Brock. That's how the story goes, you know what I'm saying? All right, there we have it. That With that, we're almost done here with this Geo dude. You know, point of the story, don't stare Brock in his non-existent eyes. I mean, uh... What, what else am I going to say? Brock and his non-existent eyes are uh, kind of creepy. You know, he's kind of just got holes there in the eyes. Just little, little big holes. The weirdest little thing he's got going. I don't even know. I don't even want to think about it. It's just completely creepy. Uh, okay, well, looks like we almost got this dude down. Holy crap, man. This Geodude is kind of a little bit of a beast. Finally, with that, we're going to grow to level 10 as well. We're going to finally learn Vine Whip. And now, get ready. We're about to make some destruction happen. We're about to kick some butt, ladies and gentlemen. All right, Vine Whip. Now, that allows us to pretty much run through this gym, make some magic happen. So let's go ahead and do this, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you guys are as excited as I am to finally take down Brock. You know, it's been a long time coming, Brock. From that first moment I saw you, I knew things were going to be different. I knew that me and you have been in competition for Nurse Joyce for a very long time. I know that me and you have a lot in common. You know, we're both uh, studly men. Studly Pokemon masters with two Pokemon, you know, uh, you know our eyes sometimes close mine only when I'm asleep yours when you're awake But uh, we're gonna try to do something here today. You know, we're gonna try to see who the better man is So guys, it looks like we are finally ready to take on the first gym leader of the Kanto region So let's go ahead and talk to him So yeah, here yeah. I'm Brock. I'm Pewter's gym leader my rock hard willpower is evident in my Pokemon My Pokemon are all rock hard and have true grit determination that's right, my Pokemon are all the rock type. <laughs> You're gonna challenge me knowing that you'll lose? That's the trainer's honor that compels you to challenge me. Fine then, show me your best. Here we go, Rodri versus Brock. Pewter City's gym leader, the rock type trainer. We are challenged by leader Brock and he's gonna go ahead and open up with his Geodude. I'm gonna open up with Bolin. Now Bolin, let, let's show him. You know what I'm saying? Let's do the magic. And look how easy this gym's gonna be, ladies and gentlemen. Unless out of nowhere this dude's got an ice beam, we're pretty much just gonna KO his two Pokemon. And with that, hope you guys have enjoyed this gym. Thanks, uh, thanks for all your tips. I really appreciate it. I really do. You guys have no idea how much uh, the tips mean to me. A lot of you guys just said uh, get over leveled and use Vine Whip. So uh, thank you for that. I uh, think I've done it correctly. 
I think I've gone ahead and uh, listened to you guys very well. I think uh, Brock is going down after this Vine Whip. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, we have defeated the first gym leader. Really easy when you choose Bulbasaur. We gained a bunch of XP. Holy crap, we're coming up on a, uh, what, an evolution already? And with that, guys, we have defeated Leader Brock. I took you for granted, and so I lost. As proof of your victory, I confer on you this, the official Pokemon League Bulger Badge. So with that, guys, we have obtained the first out of eight badges here in the Kanto region. Seven more to go. Just having the Bulbasaur Badge makes your Pokemon more powerful. It also enables the use of the Moose Flash outside of battle. Of course, a Pokemon must know the Moose Flash to use it. We got 1,400 for winning, and woo, we're done. Wait, take this with you. We obtained TM39. I wonder what that move is. No idea. Bind or something? I actually don't know what it is, so don't don't quote me here. I don't have the TMs memorized like the back of my mind. Rock Tomb. Wow, that's actually a really good move uh, that you get this early. There are all kinds of trainers in this huge world of ours. You appear to be very gifted as a Pokemon trainer, so let me make a suggestion. Go to the gym at Cerulean and test your abilities. Well, it looks like we're going to be going to the Cerulean City Gym next. If you guys have any idea how to get there, what awaits us, any other team members we should add around here before we really get going, or if I should go back and talk to my mama for the running boots, you let me know. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode. Goodbye.